Welcome back to FOSS on Linux Journal, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of July 2023, Microsoft informed about a new version of its service contract, which became valid as of 30 September 2023. The main content of this contract change was the inclusion of AI features in Microsoft products. Microsoft thus grants itself the right to permanently check content and to sanction violations. We now take a look at what this means for you as a Windows user or a user of Microsoft Office 365 or Microsoft Teams. Stay tuned until the end of the video because it's worth your time. This video is not Microsoft bashing. No, we look in detail at what exactly is changing and what the consequences might be if you don't play by the rules. First of all, there's nothing wrong with Microsoft concluding a service contract with its customers or users. After all, many things are clearly regulated in it and this creates a clear situation for both parties. If both sides would also read it, you guessed it. When you buy a laptop or install Windows on your computer, you're confronted with many data protection questions during the installation process. Also, creating a user account is no longer the way it was until a few years ago. Microsoft urges users to create an online account and use Windows with it. With some versions of Windows, there is no way around it without tricks. Microsoft argues that this only offers advantages for you. Once logged in, settings and data are fully synchronized on all devices thanks to the cloud sync and the evil word data backup can be consigned to the dustbin of IT history as a relict of the past. We are progressively looking ahead and living in the cloud. Because everything fit and is of course secure when a big player like Microsoft does it, right? But if all devices have identical settings and data, how does the data get from computer 1 to computer 2 or the tablet or smartphone? Magic? Wi-Fi? Bluetooth? No. Via Microsoft's cloud environment and preferably via OneDrive Sync. What sounds so casual works so well in practice that the most people are happy that everything works and forgot about the service contract. When they receive a message about a new version, at best they click on it, I agree. After all, that's what everything does everywhere. And of course, it's much quicker that way. But there are changes with the latest service contract. Because Microsoft now includes AI tools in its terms. These AI tools enable and the contract entitles Microsoft to use them. For example, Microsoft admits that all content in the cloud and locally is automatically scanned around the clock for certain keywords. Furthermore, Microsoft states that the generation of offensive language is already a violation of the rules. The term is hate speech. Specifically, it says, we do not allow hateful content that attacks, insults or demeans someone based on a protected characteristic such as race, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, religion, national origin, age and so on. For example, age-related jokes that you are supposedly have stored with you or on your disk could demean someone and thus already be a rule violation for the AI tool. According to the statutes, this can already lead to a blocking and, in the worst case, to a cancellation of the account. So, generating, processing and receiving offensive material may lead to far-reaching problems if the AI decides that is against the usage policy. Certainly, many argue quite right that these tools help to prevent, for example, child abuse and the like, which is an absolutely legitimate concern. No one will disagree. Microsoft itself states that the AI tools were put in place for this purpose among others. In this process, hash matching technologies, also known as PhotoDNA, are used to make content first comparable and then, if necessary, unrecognizable. But Microsoft goes farther and also uses tools for text classification and image recognition. So if something is found by the AI, human helpers can be used to check the content. 
Now you ask which service is affected. At point 4b, Microsoft talks about many services being used. However, quite far at the end of the contract, almost all Microsoft services are listed under covered services. Among them, of course, are classics that are familiar to every Windows user, such as Microsoft Account, Bing Search Engine, Cortana, Microsoft 365, Microsoft Teams, OneDrive, OneNote, Outlook, Skype, Translator, or Xbox services. And that was only a small extract of the best known services. What happens to the data on the local hard disk, specifically whether it is also analyzed, is not clear. When exactly the service interacts with the data is not clearly stated. In any case, we can assume that the data will come into contract with the AI tools if the corresponding service are used. So if you open Word 365 and write a text file, this is the case, because this is a cloud office. The spell checker in Office is AI driven these days. Saving to OneDrive saves in the cloud. If you write the document with a local Office, such as Office 2021, and save it locally, this should not apply. If you save it in the OneDrive share, we're back on track. However, it is not impossible that when the data is somehow indexed by Windows, e.g., for the Explorer search, the interaction already takes place as a part of this process and thus, for example, ancient holiday pictures could also be scanned. Who knows? I have to deliberately leave this open as it is not clearly separated in either direction. So you can look at the whole topic positive or negative. What happens in case of violations? Microsoft keeps all options open here. The sanctions range from content blocking, content removal, to account restrictions. Now it should not be new to anyone that if you misuse a service, you can be blocked and kicked out. This is usually also regulated by the terms and conditions of the respective service. But for many Windows users, the Microsoft account is probably already more than just a service they use. Many will have already stored their contents, such as pictures or documents, in the cloud, believing it to be on the local hard drive. If access to the Microsoft account is now restricted or blocked, it would be very difficult to access personal documents or pictures anymore. So, and when do you get banned? Here, Microsoft provides a code of conduct. These rules of conduct initially read comprehensibly and are understandable. First of all, one must not act unlawfully or must retain from any action that exploits or harms children. This is all perfectly okay and understandable. But where it gets interesting, it's under the third point. You are not allowed to send phishing or spam and you are not allowed to create or spread malware. Hate speech and copyright are also dealt with. And last but not least, you are not allowed to help break these rules. This means that if one violates one or more of these rules, sanctions will be likely. Whether the account is blocked or restricted probably depends on the severity of the activity. So I guess that if your mailbox is hacked and used by strangers to send spam, you will be in a different situation than if you prepare and launch DDoS attacks. Certainly, Microsoft will not take the harshest sanctions for minor offenses. Rather, this will apply in the case of repetitions of serious offenses. But the whole thing is not clear and is not exactly specified what happens when. Let's differentiate first. There is no Orwellian surveillance in a classical sense, but Microsoft has rules of conduct and these are the basics for the use of the services. It should be clear and obvious that legal requirements or the abuse of children and copyright etc. must be somehow regulated. But a clear limitation of the rules of conduct is missing. This represents the current scope of application and present Microsoft's sole view of what is good, what is bad, what is to be protected, what can be sanctioned, but without specifying exactly what and what to extend. This results in various findings and brings clarity and leaves one in the dark. 
The fact is, anyone who uses Windows with an online account and uses the services provided by Microsoft must assume that all data is interacting with these respective services will be monitored by an AI. This means letters written in Word emails sent via Outlook or photos, but also serving behavior from the Microsoft Edge browser. Everything can be included. It is unclear, however, whether data stored on a hard drive that is then opened or edited with non-Microsoft apps, for example, is also monitored by the AI because it was indexed by Windows in the local Explorer search. Where the degree of public interest and victim protection begins and where the right of personality, the right to privacy ends, is something that you leave a great deal to Microsoft's description as can be read in the rules of conduct. What is my assessment? As a user of Linux, many of these discussion points could leave me cold since I don't use the services. But you can't always avoid some services, neither privately nor professionally. My recommendations here is wait up for yourself which data is stored where and how it's processed. As a father, I am of course very interested in the welfare of my children and do not want to let them lose on any kind of dirt on the internet. If we look at where bullying is nowadays everywhere in messages, social networks, etc., it is already a desire to protect one's own offspring from it, even if this is not fully possible. So we have to prepare our children for the possible dangers. I don't think it is fundamentally wrong that there are technical aids for this, but their scope must be clearly indicated and, if possible, also regulated. In the best case, this should be done by the parents of the children who are also responsible and definitely not in the hand by a service provider. As a responsible citizen, I would like to decide for myself where my data is located and how it is processed. For this reason, Windows is out of the question for me personally as control over the data can hardly be ensured. However, I already made this decision two decades ago and not just now. Even companies using SharePoint, Office 365, Microsoft Teams cannot be sure that sensitive content is not being monitored by the AI. Is this what one would like to see in companies for the arms industry or medical corporations, sensitive information being evaluated by an AI? Let's leave aside the question of where this evaluation actually takes place. I'll leave it up to you to decide when paranoia and alien hats begin or not, and I'm firmly confident that you alone should decide that. But for that, you must also fulfill your duty to read the contracts that are submitted to you and not agree to them prematurely. For my taste, Microsoft is going too far. For one thing, the rule of conduct of today can be a pale shadow of those of tomorrow. On the one hand, there are terms like hate speech or offensive in there that can be interpreted in any way. Under pressure of governments, offensive content could be easily and quickly censored or, as it called, removed. In some kind, I have a bad feeling about that. What you mean by that may be different from what I mean by that. So here you are fully surrendering to Microsoft's view of what they mean by that in Redmond. Brave new world. Sorry, but I'm out of it. Many of my viewers already use Linux, but I would also be interested if you're currently using Windows, what you think about it and what conclusions you draw from it. Why don't you write your opinion about in the comments? And if you're interested in more, I have a lot of Linux on a regular basis. A free channel subscription is certainly worthwhile for both of us. Feel free, also follow me on X. Thank you for the kind attention, ladies and gentlemen. See you soon. Peace. Thank you.